What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Houston Texans franchise video. We are 8-5 and five currently. We're a division leader. You guys saw the standings there. Um, Tennessee Titans are hot on our trail though. At 7-6, and six, we are 8-5. and five. So this is a big game against Jacksonville. And in uh, real life, they're a very, very tough team. They're a very stingy defense. Offense seems to be clicking right now. Blake Bortles uh, really having a pretty solid season. Uh, good enough to make them a Super Bowl contender uh, in real life. But um, in this game, they're not doing so well. So it should be an easy W for the Texans. But we're going to have to stop them on offense and really shut down Leonard Fournette. And then really capitalize on our offensive possessions uh, with Tom Savage. If we can do that is another question. Uh, I mean, we do have Lamar Miller is also injured. And look at that throw, though. Look at that throw by Tom Savage to DeAndre Hopkins off the play action and an off-balance throw for a 29-yard gain. So Savage looks to be like he's got everything under control here. Nice little pass to Fedorowicz for a catch there. But like I was saying, guys, we don't have Lamar Miller. He's injured for a couple more weeks. We do have Alfred Blue playing and no Braxton Miller because Dorio Green Beckham has been playing in his stead. And then a nice pass to Will Fuller. Jukes a guy to miss a tackle there. Uh, gains a couple extra yards, but looks to me like Tom Savage has got a grasp. But a nice little hold here on the offense, but missed an open receiver. Alfred Blue was running up the middle there. Uh, decided to go to Dorio Green Beckham and really just out of field goal range. So no action there, no points to be had. And then a uh, sack there by Heath. Going to drop Blake Bortles for a 10-yard loss. So that's huge for the Texans' defense. And then we got more pressure on Bortles, but he's going to make a big throw on third and 15, and he's going to get Marquise Lee for 14 yards, but it's going to be fourth and one. So no harm, no foul there for the Jaguars offense against the Texans defense. But Leonard Fournette is going to start getting involved here and he's going to pick up a first down. Three carries for 29 yards. Blake Bortles dropping back. He's going to take it himself. He's going to try to get positive yardage, but instead he's going to get no gain. So it's going to be fourth and nine. So they're going to punt the football away. So we're now we're in the middle part of the second quarter. And then look at Alfred Blue. There you go, Blue. Love it. Six rushes for 30 yards thus far. That's five yards per carry is what he's averaging. A little play action. Because of that five yards per carry, they got to respect it. And then Savage is going to find Doriel Green Beckham for a big gain off that play action pass. 25-yard gain. He's pumped up. Texans are pumped up. They got to get into field goal range at least to get some points on the board. But Ngakue is going to make a sack on Savage. So we're at the two-minute warning, and out comes Nick Novak. And we're just going to push it a little bit right. It had the distance. It's probably going to go. But it's going to be a missed field goal, and it's still a nothing-nothing football game with a minute 56 left to play. And Bortles is got Allen Robinson down the sideline. That's a big game, man. 22 yards. That's a big game. But the question is, is was he actually in bounds? And I'm saying he wasn't. So we were thinking about doing the challenge, throwing the challenge flag, but it's going to be a booth review. So they're going to take a look at it a couple more times here, but it, it looks like he didn't get in. He definitely made the catch had control, had finished the process, completed the process, so um, just didn't get the feet in bounds. So I was hoping that they would call that, and they did, so that is, I'm very thankful for that because it's still a nothing, nothing game, and we need um, the Jaguars offense to uh, get held down here uh, to give us a chance, but another setback. For the Jaguars. A flag here. It's going to be a false start on the offense, so it's going to push him back another 10 yards. Five yards, excuse me, not a holding call. False starts are five. Second and 15 now. Bortles dropping back. He's got his tight end there on a the little flare, but it's a 
only going to get two. So third and 13, a minute 10 left to go. Don't know why they were waiting to snap the football here, trying to kill the clock. And then an incompletion, a nice play there by Kareem Jackson. That was either Kareem Jackson or Kevin Johnson. I'm not sure which one. But good play there to set up fourth down and get the punt team on. Alfred Blue makes a nice catch there. He was wide open on that play. Had Tom Savage been a little bit more accurate, probably would have had a lot of yards after the catch, a lot of yak. And then look at this catch by Doro Green Beckham. He was in, he was mid dive when he made that catch, but uh, defender kind of reeled him back in. So time is winding down here. We were thought about calling a timeout, but figured might as well spike it especially since if a field goal goes bad in real life, you want to have a timeout available. So um, that's how I would have done it in real life. That's how I did it in the game. Uh, but Nick Novak's going to kick this thing through. So it's three to nothing. We got a barn burner up in Jacksonville. <laughs> three to nothing Texans. And the Jaguars don't really have any answers right now on offense. The Texans are playing some really solid defense they're forcing Blake Bortles to feel some pressure to make errant throws um, a lot of rushed throws a lot of sideline throws that just aren't getting complete and a few drops too so but look at this look at DeAndre Hopkins going up for it he's gonna contested too a contested throw there but he's gonna make a catch 49 yard touchdown it's gonna be 10 to nothing guys after the extra point is through but take a look at this Tom Savage is winding up and bombing it but he's got to trust his playmakers man and DeAndre Hopkins has been amazing amazing this entire season he's got over 1250 receiving yards and we're not even done with the season yet over 12 touchdowns receiving I mean, it's it's nuts. It's nuts. He's having a Pro Bowl caliber season. He's definitely the best wide receiver uh, in this season, for sure, stats-wise. I know Odell Beckham gets a lot of love, but uh, for this season and this series, he's been amazing. But look at Brian Cushing. Ever since uh, McKinney has been out, Cushing has been stepping in and filling in really nicely. He's going to force a fumble here off the big hit on Leonard Fournette. Take a look at this again. Boom. Laying the lumber on a big man, too. I mean, Fournette does not fumble the football. And, you know, Fournette's big. He's a big running back. And the fact that Brian Cushing was able to lay that hit stick on him, forcing that fumble, is, uh, is big for the Texans, especially here trying to get more points on the board and extend that lead, but unable to convert first down on that drive. So it's going to be third and nine for the Jaguars and nice completion there to none other than Allen Robinson. So in a 10, nothing game, we're going to try to hold on, but Leonard Fournette's going to get a touchdown. He's going to pound it in there. It's going to be 10 to seven now. So Jacksonville is uh, not out of this. They're definitely not out of this. You're going to be down three heading into the fourth quarter and that's where we are now is the beginning of the fourth quarter with seven minutes left to go and Alfred Blue taking it to the outside he's got a lot of open room busted off tackle but he's gonna fumble the football and the ball goes out of bounds so Texans maintain possession here risky throw there uh, to get Alfred Blue again on a completion uh, but Tom Savage, guys, that was not a very good throw there. He just he lucked out, but unable to convert the third down. So it's going to force fourth. Nick Novak comes on, gets that field goal through, 13 to seven. And then look at this: Jonathan Joseph reads the curl route and picks it off, and he's going to go all the way with some blockers in the front. Awesome, awesome. Do that dance, pump those fists, man. You deserve it, Jonathan Joseph. Pick six, look at that route, boom, he's gone. <laughs> Read that perfectly off of Alan Hearns. It's gonna be 19 to seven. We are gonna go for two to try to make it 21 to seven. And Fedorowicz, oh, he got in. He got in, the two point conversion is good. 
So good job there by Savage to find Fedorowicz, and even better job by Fedorowicz to shake off the tackle and get in. But this game is not over. Definitely not over. Bortles finds his man there, Alan Hearns, for a touchdown. 21 to 14 and look at the onside kick with 57 seconds left and Jacksonville is going to recover the onside kick and now they're on the 30 yard line with 12 seconds left can they convert it's going to be an incomplete pass guys they have one more play can they get a touchdown to tie this football game let's see what they got looking deep and it's going to be incomplete that's second and 10 thought that was going to be their last play but they got one more. They got one more. Six seconds left, and they're going deep, but it's not going to be a very good throw here as Andre Hall gets this interception, and he was trying to dive, and he fumbled the football. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered, though, because time has expired. Guys, good win. Good win for the Houston Texans. We are now 9-5, and five, and Jacksonville continues to struggle this season. Uh... That first game of the year we had against Jacksonville, Blake Bortles threw a ton of interceptions and we shut them down. And that's exactly what happened here. Threw another interception to Jonathan Joseph, one to Andre Hall at the end of the game. So Blake Bortles has had his issues with the Texans, uh, for sure. Um, but none, nonetheless, it's a good win for the Texans and we are now in third place in the AFC. Let's take a look at the other standings for the AFC. We got the Bengals at nine and five in the North, we're nine and five. But the Titans won their matchup, so they're eight and six. So we head into a game against Pittsburgh that we have to win, otherwise, you know, Tennessee's going to be tied with us if they win their next matchup as well. And so we'll both be nine and six. So it'll be very tough. It'll be very tough to keep up with their little push here. The Raiders are in first in the. AFC West, the Lions, 9-5 and five in first place in the North. Packers, though, 8-6, and six, so kind of the same situation as in our own division. The Saints are in first place there at 10-4. and four. Eagles clinched a playoff spot at 11-3. and three. Cowboys also 10-4, and four, so they're seeking to get into the playoffs as well. Cardinals win their division 10-4, and four, since there's no way a 6-8 and eight Seahawks team can beat them in the standings so guys take a look here that is the playoff picture that we just covered this game here is against the Steelers it's gonna be it's gonna be tough it's gonna be a tough game uh, with, against Antonio Brown Le'Veon Bell Ben Roethlisberger uh, I don't think Juju Smith um, was a starter in this game so um, that will obviously change in the roster update uh, it's probably already changed in the roster update, but these are beginning of the season rosters. So Smith Schuster's kind of buried in the depth chart. Alfred Blue, though, we're going to try to get him working early and often because this Pittsburgh Steelers defense, you're not going to be able to throw a whole lot on them. Uh, they're very good in the secondary. Doriel Green Beckham, though, is going to get 18 yard catch. It's kind of funny because his number is 18. <laughs> We love that. And look at Alfred Blue go again. He's, he's going to pick up nine on this play. 22, yard, 22 yards rushing thus far on two attempts. And Savage dropping back here. He's going to find Alfred Blue, who actually does get involved a lot in our passing game. And a little play action to Alfred Blue. And a nice catch there by C.J. Fedorowicz. So that's the thing, guys. We like to get Blue involved early and then we like to throw him the football. Kind of the same thing that we do for Lamar Miller, but look at this little toss crack play to Blue. He's gonna take it into the corner of the end zone for an early touchdown. The Texans are now up seven to nothing. And we drove down the field in a lot, we wasted a lot of clock. It's about five minutes that we drove down there. And then just to get that touchdown, it's well worth it. So the object here is to keep this Pittsburgh Steelers offense off the football field but and this is the reason why Ben Roethlisberger eight yards rushing on one attempt and Bill O'Brien's thinking how do you let a 30 plus year old Roethlisberger run on you it doesn't make any sense nice catch there it looks like that's Jesse James for a nice catch that's 13 yard grab it's gonna set up first down Roethlisberger dropping back 
and scrambling here, trying to look for somebody open, but throws off balance and unable to connect with Le'Veon Bell. So fourth and ten is going to bring on Chris Boswell, who's going to try to attempt this long field goal, and it's looking like it's curving right, but it's just going to get into that tiny corner in the right part of that field goal upright, and it's going to be good. So 7-3. to three. And then look at this catch by DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, my goodness. Tom Savage, man, has been playing lights out as backup quarterback. He's 6 of 7 in this game, and then that catch there. And look at that catch by Will Fuller, man. Like, Savage is putting the ball right on the money. He's now 7 for 8. That's the first reception for Will Fuller. We've got Alfred Blue coming in motion here. And it looks like he's open down that right sideline, and he's going to drop the pass. So 7 of 10 for Savage. That was also a perfect thrown ball, a perfectly thrown ball right there. And But that was not. So I just totally jinxed him. He's got to make this tackle on this interception, and he's unable to. So Williams is going to take this thing all the way back for a pick six. Dang. That hurts. That definitely hurts because we were already on our plus side of the 50. And, you know, that, that pick six, you can't have those. You can't have pick sixes. So it's going to be 10 to 7 Steelers, but Savage and. <laughs> I was just going to say Savage and the Texans are not done. And then Hopkins makes his catch and fumbles the football. So just when we were talking last game, how Hopkins is having a wonderful wonderful season he finally has one of his first screw-ups of the season and he fumbles this football and what do you know Williams picks it up almost took it back for a touchdown and Roethlisberger trying to get out of some pressure and he does and he's gonna beat his man off the oh my goodness and he's gonna take it all the way to the two yard line at the two minute warning unbelievable guys so Roethlisberger it's almost like we got to put a spy on him which is totally uncharacteristic of his game right now but look at this fumble look at this fumble huge fumble by Le'Veon Bell and the Steelers give the ball back unbelievable guys so just when Pittsburgh probably could have put this game out of out of reach because they, they do have a good defense they fumble the ball and now look at Savage who's been like I said before guys he's been great he's throwing us to Hopkins who takes it all the way in to the end zone for a touchdown. What a perfectly thrown football. That that had to be thrown right then and right there because Hopkins was just coming out of his break. The defensive back had no shot. Wow, guys, this is crazy. This is crazy. DeAndre Hopkins with another touchdown. I, I, I'm at a loss for And then look at J.J. Watt causing a fumble off Ben Roethlisberger. And Andre Hall picks this thing up. Actually, that's Kevin Jackson. That Kareem Jackson. Sorry, I keep getting those guys mixed up. Kevin Johnson, Kareem Jackson. But look at look at Watt, man. Right when Roethlisberger is getting ready to throw. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Look at that. Gonna swat the football right out of his hands. And just to let you guys know, with all these turnovers going on, I'm gonna show you the settings here. So you guys know this is real can't change it this isn't fake it's you see the game there 14 to 10 this is on all pro all pro simulation so this ain't this ain't no pro this ain't no rookie this is all pro level of Madden right now so I don't know what's up with all the turnovers but it is what it is fourth down situation there third down could not convert Nick Novak kicks a long field goal through so it's now 17 to 10 we're up by a touchdown. Good stuff. Good stuff as we're late in the second quarter. And then look at Roethlisberger. He was looking like he was going to get ready to throw, actually run, excuse me. He was going to get ready to run the football, but then he stopped and found Antonio Brown wide open. And Brown is making everybody miss, right? Mike Tomlin calls a timeout, gets Boswell to come on out, kicks this field goal up and good. It's now 17-13. to 13. And we're going into halftime, guys, with a four-point lead. So Texans are showing their mettle here against a really, really great Pittsburgh Steelers team. 
they're they're coming out playing. 38 rushing yards in the half, but the statistic I really look at is Tom Savage's 199. Uh, he's really letting it fly, making really precise throws. Other than that pick six, uh, he's been he's been great. So. Uh, let's get right back into the action, though. Roethlisberger going to get tackled here on a third and four. That is Brian Cushing, who's going to stuff him to get to fourth and one. And then Boswell comes on out. It's going to be 17 to 16 now as that field goal is good. So time winding down here in the third quarter. We're at a minute 34, and Savage dropping back off that play action. And he's going to run for the sideline, and he's going to dive. And the ball does come loose. But it's picked up. It's a glitch in, the, glitch in the game there, guys. The ball was picked up by a Steelers defender, but they still let Houston have the football because his foot was out of bounds when he picked up the ball. <laughs> so, and the other thing, they gave him a turnover on it. They gave it a fumble recovery, but they still gave Houston the football back. So we caught a break. We caught a break right there. You guys just saw Dorio Green Beckham make a nice catch uh, as Savage was in some, some really some heated pressure there. Another great catch to Dorio Green Beckham there on the hitch route. And then on the one yard line, we are going to Alfred Blue as Fedorowicz moves in motion. He's going to pound it in for a touchdown. So it's going to be 24 to 16. We're up eight. So here's the deal. Situation here as we are in five minutes in the fourth quarter. You do not want to give up a touchdown here and a two-point conversion. But not looking too good right now as a first down is converted by the Steelers. And then Roethlisberger looking deep. He's got his man there. Touchdown. So it's going to be 24 to 22, so two-point conversion try. Roethlisberger finds 86 again. So it's going to be 24 to 24, 433 left to go. Big spot here for the Texans. And then look at Alfred Blue just taking it to the outside. There was nothing there up the middle. The play was designed up the middle, and he's going to take it all the way for a touchdown. <laughs> Savage is pumped up, man. 31 to 24. Alfred Blue is pumped up. Guys, huge, huge, huge play there. Great job by Alfred Blue and the ball carrier vision right there. Puts the Texans up by a touchdown, and it's gonna it's pretty much gonna seal the deal as four minutes left to go if we can hold them here. But look at this. Le'Veon Bell, can we get him a tackle, please? Can we tackle him? Oh my gosh, got to stop the Steelers offense, guys, because we don't want a situation like we had happen before with that two-point conversion where they tied it, but good tackle there. Going to be fourth and one. Got to get a stop. Got to get a stop. Got pressure. He's tied up. He's going to get dropped, guys. So the Texans get a huge fourth down stop on the Steelers. All Tom Savage has to do is lead the troops out run this football and kill that clock and Alfred Blue does it perfectly first down with 12 seconds left to go guys this game is over Steelers I'm not a big fan of the Steelers I don't really like Pittsburgh Steelers but I love the Houston Texans <laughs> 31 to 24 we got it done Tom Savage is 2 and 0 in the stead of Deshaun Watson Actually, sorry, no, he is 2-1 uh, and because we're going to give him the loss against Tennessee. Even though that might not be fair, though. That might not be fair. What do you guys think? We're going to go with the narrative that Tom Savage is 2-0. and I kind of like that. So, guys, next couple days here, I'm going to be posting the Week 17 matchup between us and the Colts. Let you guys know about some standings. And uh, go from there. And then, it, I mean, we're in the playoffs. That win right there officially sealed our playoff hopes and dreams. So uh, we'll be getting Deshaun Watson back. He's going to be healthy for the Colts game. So look forward to that. And just in time, guys, Savage did his job, got us to the playoffs, clinching the playoffs. And now we got Deshaun Watson to lead us to a possible Super Bowl with that defense starting to play 
really, really well. So guys, I will catch you sometime next week and leave a like if you like the fact that Texans are in the playoffs now. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that red subscribe button or my logo and I will see you guys in the next video. And as always, peace.